All right, we're going to do a little bit of work here on how we simplify rational expressions. And again, rational just means stuff with fractions in it. Okay? Fractions. Yay. All right, so um, say we have something like this. Um, let's go with just numbers. Say I have 6 over 8. Now, theoretically, you should be totally confident saying, well, that's the same thing as 3 fourths. Well, let's take a look and see how you actually figured that out because you probably did it in your head because um, you've been doing it sufficiently long that you didn't really think about it. Um, one may, you might say is, well, I just divided the top and the bottom by 2. Um, and in fact, I just automatically wrote that. Um, you know, you might say, it's supposed to be a division sign. Ah, there we go. You know, you might have said, well, I did this, and then I got 3 fourths. Um, but really, the mathematically correct, precise way to say what you did is to say that you decided that 6 was 3 times 2 and 8 was 4 times 2. And then you found that they both had a 2, so then you could divide both sides, the top and the bottom, by 2 and get 3 fourths. Um, more commonly in math, we would say, okay, I can cross these out and I'll get 3 fourths. Okay? Now, note that, say, um, shall we say, hmm. I'm going to do this. Yeah. 5 over 6. We can't do anything with that, right? Um, what sometimes people will do, I mean, you would never say, I guess what I'm trying to get at is you would never say that this is true, right? 5, 6 is clearly not equal to 3 fourths. But what sometimes people do when they're doing math is they'll do something the equivalent of doing this and say, oh, look, it's 3 fourths, which is bad. Okay. So one of the pretty much the most important thing to remember whenever you're simplifying anything in a fraction, any kind of rational expression, is that um, you can only cross things out that are multiplied by each other. Okay. And I guess I should say you can only cross things out that are factored out. Okay. So just like you would never do this, because, I mean, that just wouldn't even make any sense to you numerically, make sure you understand why, let me say that, I'm going to slow this more so I don't to fit this all on the same page. So you would never do this, right? So how come a lot of times in math you see people do stuff like this? They'll go, oh, look, the x's cancel out, so I have 3 plus 4, or they'll say, so this somehow becomes a 1, or uh, I don't even know, okay? So the only time you, you can multiply, cross things out is if they are multiplied by each other. So if they're factorable, they are um, removable. So another analog, a correct way to do it, so these are both bad. Bad! Um, so uh, an analog would be to say if I had 3x over 4x, since this is 3 times x and this is 4 times x, that means I could cross them out and get 3 fourths. Or if I had 3, let's say, 3x plus 3 over 4x plus 4, I could factor out a 3 from the top, and I could factor out a 4 from the bottom, and in this way, the x plus 1s would cancel out, and I'd get 3 fourths. So as long as I can factor something out, I can cross something out. Okay? So that's kind of where we're going with this. As long as you can factor it out, you can cross it out. So let's go in here and try an actual example. All right, let's say we've got x plus 2 quantity squared over x squared minus 4. That's just not pretty. There we go. Over x minus 4. Now, the first thing you want to do is factor these out. So on this kind of a problem, go ahead and see if you can get it factored out on your own. Pause the video, give it a shot, because that's how you're going to know if you're really learning it. All right. So if we factor out the top, we get x plus 2 times x plus 2. We're not really factoring, I'm just writing out what that literally is. Now on the bottom, I have x plus 2 and x minus 2, because it's a difference of two squares. I see that the top has an x plus 2 and the bottom has an x plus 2. So that means that I can cancel those out 
and I end up with x plus 2 over x minus 2. So this is the simplified version of that previous equation. Now something that's important to note that in a problem like this, say I have um, 3x plus 5 over 2x or something like that. Now just because there's an x over here and an x over here, that doesn't mean that I can cancel these out. Remember, if I can't factor it out, I can't cross it out. If I desperately wanted to pull an x out, I could, but it would give me something like this. And then whenever I try to cancel out the x's, I'd end up with something that was just still, com not nonsense, but just silly. So remember that you can't actually factor something. Um, you can't actually cross something out unless you can factor it. So um, if I was going to do this, I would say it was already simplified. Because there's nothing else that I can pull out. Now, to not put too fine a point on it, that doesn't mean that just because something looks like it might already be simplified, that doesn't mean that it actually is. So take a look at a similar problem that we just had, is the, the one, two, two examples ago. Um, this looks like a mess, actually. You might say, okay, well, here's this. All divided by x plus 2, x minus 2. Now remember, you cannot go in here and cross these out because you can't pull it out of the 16. You can't, if you can't pull out of all the terms, you can't cross it out. Okay? So we have to try another tactic. On a problem like this, what you might go ahead and do is multiply the top, multiply this part here out and see if you can come up with anything a little bit better. So if I do x plus 2 times x plus 2, use the FOIL method first, outer, inner, last, I hope I did this right, and then in here, oh I still have this, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it like this. All right. Now I have x squared plus 4x minus 12 on the top. I still have x plus 2 times x minus 2 on the bottom. Now I can go ahead and see, this is actually kind of a hard problem. I just threw it in at the beginning for a reason unbeknownst to anyone, really. Now I can see, well, can I factor the top? And the answer hopefully is yes, I can. So it's an x and an x, and I'm going to go with this. 6 and a 2 with a plus on the 6 and a minus on the 2 because then my outers are minus 2, my inner is plus 6. And that gives me 4x, which is what I need. Okay. And so now these cancel out and I end up with x plus 6 over x plus 2. All right, so sometimes you have to work a little bit harder to get these things working, and this is probably a pretty advanced problem, so if this doesn't make any sense to you, come back again in a couple of minutes or whenever and try working it again and see if you can get the answer. Okay, so let's try another one. Let's try 2x squared over 10x cubed minus 2x squared. Now in a problem like this, it's important to continue to remember that if I factor something out of the bottom, and here I can factor out a 2x squared. If I pull a 2x squared out of the first term, I'm left with a 5x. If I pull a 2x squared out of the second term, I've taken everything out, but remember, I still have to leave a placeholder. Right? And this, this is standard factoring law. Um, if I have two terms here, then whenever I factor it out, I need to have two terms here. Okay. Now I have a 2x squared on the top and a 2x squared on the bottom so I can cross them out. But again, I can't just leave that as a nothing. If I pull a 2x squared out of there, I have a 1 left over because that's the placeholder. So, oops, minus. Come here. Minus. There we go. So I also have a placeholder here. So 1 over 5x minus 1. Got it? 
sweet. Now, ah, there we go. whenever you're doing this kind of work, occasionally we'll do something like this to you. It's important to remember that you can reorder adding terms without any trouble whatsoever. So we can reorder addition. And in this case, again, if I have an x plus 2 on the top and an x plus 2 on the bottom, I put in my placeholders 1 over 1. So that's a 1 on top, right? Just like 5 divided by 5. You know 5 divided by 5 is 1. But technically, if you wanted to go in and factor out those 5s, you have a placeholder of a 1 on the top, a placeholder of 1 on the bottom, equaling 1. Now where you can't reorder as easily is if you have subtraction. So let me do something like this. Oops. Come here. Okay. So we can't reorder with subtraction exactly, but what I can do is I can factor out a negative 1. Now if I factor a negative 1 out of a 2, I'm left with a negative 2, right? Because negative 1 times negative 2 will give me a positive 2. If I factor a negative 1 out of a negative x, that gives me a positive x. And if that's, oops, and if that's a little confusing to you, go back and distribute. Go this times this is, um, come on, I can do this, 2. And this times this is minus x. That's the same thing as here. So basically, factoring out a negative 1 switches the order of your subtraction as best as you can. So I can say that negative 1 times negative 2 plus x, I, now it's addition, plus, you can either think about it as plus a negative 2, switching the order of addition. x plus a negative 2 is the same thing as x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. Now this is good because I can go ahead and factor that out. I'm left with a negative 1 on the top and a placeholder of 1 on the bottom. Negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. And that's my answer there.